Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, guys, uh, I want to learn about uh, Italy, you know, Italian history, 800 to 1600, around there, and uh, so let's do it. History of Venice, Rise to Glory, Preemptive Like, Epic History TV, awesome channel. My name is Connor, hello. Nice to meet you, sir, or madam. I like to learn about things, let's go. Ooh. The history of Venice is a tale of sea power, and who could be a more fitting sponsor than World of Warships, the epic free-to-play MMO. Guys, make sure you use any uh... tactics, but mostly firepower. World of Warships has more than 200 playable ships, all meticulously researched historical vessels, such as the cruiser HMS Belfast or the massive USS Iowa. Epic History TV is a registered and very mediocre player whose trademark tactic is using the hull of his slow-moving cruiser to soak up enemy torpedoes and thereby save the fleet. Use the link and code below to get a bonus starter pack that includes HMS Campbelltown, the destroyer the British famously rammed into Saint-Nazaire dock and blew to pieces. Thanks to World of Warships for supporting this video. This is the extraordinary city of Venice. Today, one of the world's top tourist destinations. But once capital of a maritime republic that ruled the most powerful empire in the Mediterranean. Venice's history was shaped by its unique location. At the height of the Roman Empire, these coastal lagoons were home only to small fishing communities. But then, in the 5th century AD, the Western Roman Empire was overrun by barbarian tribes. As Italy became a battleground for Huns, Goths, Eastern Romans and Lombards, many sought refuge among the lagoons. In 726, these refugees elected Orso, to be their duke, or doge, the first in an unbroken line of 117 doges who would rule Venice for a thousand years. For nearly 200 years, much of Italy was ruled by a resurgent Eastern Roman, or Byzantine, empire. Its Italian province, known as the Exarchate of Ravenna, fell to the Lombards in 751. Only Venice held out, protected by its lagoons. Answering the Pope's call for aid, Charlemagne and the Franks came to Italy and crushed the Lombards. But they also failed to take Venice. Charlemagne's son, Pepin, King of Italy, was said to have died from a fever caught in the marshes that surrounded Venice as he tried to attack the city. In the following decades, Venice asserted its independence from the Byzantine Empire. And thanks to its location, flourished as a trading hub between Europe and the East. Venetian merchants sold Italian grain and wine to the great city of Constantinople, where they bought spices and silk to sell to Western Europe. Above all, Venice's early success came from the trade of salt, the vital food preservative of the medieval world, harvested from salt pans and lagoons. The Venetians went so far as to describe salt as il vero fondamento del nostro stato, the true foundation of our state. In 828, two Venetian merchants visiting Alexandria smuggled the supposed body of St. Mark back to Venice to boost the standing of their home city. The saint's relics were interred in the city's great new church, the Basilica di San Marco. The first basilica was destroyed by fire in 976. Today's cathedral, consecrated in 1094, stands on the same site. St. Mark became the city's patron saint. A thousand-year-old building. His emblem, the winged lion, became the symbol of the Republican saint, stands on the same site. St. Mark became the city's patron saint. His emblem, the winged lion, became the symbol of the Republic. 
and decorated its standard. Venetian trade routes to the east were plagued by pirates from the Balkan and North African coasts. So Venice built a navy to drive them from the seas and garrisoned strategic harbours and islands along the Adriatic shore. By the year 1000, doges of Venice were also styling themselves Dukes of Dalmatia. Guys, the term pirate, like, w pirate, um... So, th these were pirates to Venice, but I I'd imagine were... Like, it, it almost makes it out to, like, these guys are, like, the bad guys. I, I don't know if that's just me thinking that because of the word pirate. But it, it's just there was no centralized authority in the uh, Mediterranean or in the Aegean, Adriatic. Um, Adriatic and Aegean. And so Venice just built up enough power to clear all of them out of there. I don't, the word pirate just, like, conjures up a certain image in my mind. The seas that might not be accurate. And garrisoned strategic harbours and islands along the Adriatic shore. By the year 1000, doges of Venice were also styling themselves Dukes of Dalmatia. The distinctive Venetian warship was the galley, powered by up to 150 oars and triangular latine sails, rigged fore and aft. Weapons included a battering ram, and around 30 crossbowmen. Galleys were also used to transport high-value cargo, such as spices, silks, or precious stones. In 1103, construction began of Venice's famous Arsenale, a giant state-owned shipyard that would become one of Europe's largest industrial centers, employing around 2,000 workmen and turning out hundreds of ships a year. I'm also really interested in the evolution of, of ships and, you know, sails and whatnot, and so that that's covering that too. The Arsenale pioneered many modern industrial techniques and underpinned Venetian naval power for centuries. Armed with a powerful navy... I have to shut up. Jesus. ...a year. The Arsenale pioneered many modern industrial techniques and underpinned Venetian naval power for centuries. Armed with a powerful navy and lucrative trading concessions from the Byzantine Emperor, Venice rose to become the greatest commercial and naval power in the Eastern Mediterranean. But Venetian power... Commercial... Um, okay, Golden Bull of, of 1082, Emperor Alexios the first Comnenos grants to the Republic of Venice trading rights across the empire, tax and customs exemptions, harbor rights at Constantinople, nice, creation of a Venetian quarter in the city. ...and naval power in the eastern Mediterranean. But Venetian power also came through shrewd negotiation and self-interest. This was the age of the Crusades, and Venice was closely involved with Crusader states as allies and trading partners. In 1202, the Fourth Crusade arrived in Venice, seeking ships to take them to Egypt, but with no money to pay for them. Doge Enrico Dandolo sensed an opportunity. In exchange for loans, he first persuaded the Crusaders to capture Zadar for Venice. Then, relations having soured between Venice and the Byzantines, to attack Constantinople itself. In 1204, the world's greatest Christian city was sacked and plundered by self-proclaimed warriors of Christ. Venice took its share of the loot, including most famously four bronze horses from the Hippodrome of Constantine, which found a new home on the facade of St. Mark's Basilica in the center of Venice. Venice. I was just about to say they're still there. You know, the original sculptures were removed in 1973 due to conservation concerns. Okay, fair enough. And replaced by these replicas. Doge 
Duke Enrico and the Crusaders carved up the Byzantine Empire between them. Venice got the islands of the Aegean, Crete and the strategically placed ports of Modone and Coroni, known henceforth as the Eyes of the Republic. Empire brought Venice unprecedented wealth and power, but fueled a bitter rivalry with another Italian maritime republic, Genoa. For more than a century, these two Italian city-states vied for supremacy in the eastern Mediterranean, their wars ranging from the Levant to Sicily, the Aegean, Black Sea and Adriatic. During these wars, a Venetian captain named Marco Polo was taken prisoner and used his time in a Genoa named Marco Polo. During these wars, a Venetian captain named Marco Polo was taken prisoner and used his time in a Genoese jail to dictate an account of his travels in China. The Did, didn't he go on his giant, you know, exploration trip and, and just to come back and get immediately arrested? Rivalry became a regional conflict. Genoa making alliances with the Habsburg Duke of Austria, the King of Hungary and Padua. Venice with the revived Byzantine Empire, Cyprus and Milan. The fortunes of war ebbed and flowed until in 1379, Venice came under attack from land and sea with a Genoese force occupying Chioggia, just 15 miles south of the city. But Venice miraculously turned the tables using galleys armed with gunpowder artillery for the first time to trap and capture the Genoese fleet. The wars finally ended in 1381 with the Peace of Turin. Venice had to make significant concessions, and like Genoa... A Peace of Turin, 1381, Venice to give up Dalmatia to Louis, King of Hungary, and pay annual tribute, okay? Venice to remove forces from island of Tenedos. Venice to end, all, end alliance with Byzantine Emperor and King of Cyprus. Venice to recognize Trieste as a free city. ...had been exhausted by war. But while Genoa soon fell victim to internal feuding, Venice would stage an astonishing recovery, thanks in large part to the unique system of government by which the Republic was now ruled. The most miraculous city of Venice, rich in gold but richer in fame, strong in power but stronger in virtue, built on both solid marble and the harmony of its citizens. Petrarch. While Western Europe was dominated by kings who claimed to rule by divine right, several Italian city-states harked back to classical forms of government, chiefly the idea of the Republic, res publica, the thing of the people. However, at the height of its power, Venice's Republic, La Serenissima as it was known, was firmly in the hands of its nobility. Only those whose names were listed in the Golden Book the city's registry of nobility could join the Great Council, which appointed all senior officials through a complex system of voting and drawing lots. They chose 40 of their members to form the Quarantia, who supervised economic affairs, and two to three hundred to form the Senate, the main legislative body, attended in addition by the Republic's admirals, generals and diplomats. The elected head of government remained the Doge. His powers had been steadily diminished, until by the 1400s, he was no more, Venetians joked, than a tavern sign, a decorative symbol of power, though he continued to wield huge influence. The Republic's day-to-day -day government was the Signoria, made up of the Doge, the six members of his minor council, and three representatives of the Quarantia. They could be joined by three boards of special advisors, known as the Savi, or wise men, to form the full college. The Council of Ten, meanwhile, had a special remit to sniff out subversion. It was a system that eventually acquired so many checks and balances that change, for good or ill, seemed both unimaginable and undesirable. I, I find, uh, so of course they're leaving out a giant part of the population, I get it. But I find, um, you know, creating 
these moments in in the histories of, of different nations or city states so fascinating when they when they come up with uh you know political governmental structures like this because it's it's really it's smart and and it's exactly what you what you would think people would come up with and and they do it and there's always these checks and balances that always seems to lead to a stalemate and it, it's sort of like a and a double-edged sword is that the it just is fascinating to see people really construct government and you know kind of almost from scratch and the way they do it, it it seems pretty logical you know good or ill seemed both unimaginable and undesirable the constitution of venice an insuperable monument of wisdom and efficiency gasparo contarini over time, an idea developed across Europe that Venice's constitution contained the three classical forms of government. Democracy, oligarchy, and monarchy, in perfect balance, and so ensured social harmony and stability. The myth of Venice, as this became known, overlooked the Republic's healthy tradition of attempted coups, rampant corruption, and social tension. But the Venetians did achieve something rare in the medieval and Renaissance world. A durable, stable and effective government. The Serene Republic had one further strikingly modern feature. The best diplomats in Europe, skilled ambassadors in every capital and court, sending information back to Venice in secret code from across the continent. Venice would need every advantage for the years ahead would be dominated by bitter wars with her Italian neighbors and new challenges to her empire. This was a perfect video to get me started into the transition because it went from the fall of, of the uh, Roman Empire with Byzantine and, and in the West, and it just, it, perfect. That was perfect getting me into it, and I'm ready to, uh, is there, there has to be. To be continued, it was in 2018. Cool. Awesome. Hope you guys uh, learned something or enjoyed that as much as I did. Or can help me in the comments if I had any questions, which I think I did. Yeah, my first video of the day. Sorry if I'm a bit tired. See you guys next time.